Hello everybody. Yes, I know it's been a while. Um, I thank you for your patience in um, waiting for us to come back online after our transitioning period. Okay, so today I've got very exciting news um, that I would like to share with everybody. This is big. This is going to take some chewing on what I'm about to reveal. Um, it's going to take some processing. The few people who have heard what God has said to me um, and revealed to me has needed time to process. Um, we've also seen some severe attack coming straight after the revelation in terms of our faith. Okay, so I have revealed the vision and the understanding and wisdom that God has given me regarding what I'm going to share today um, to a couple of people. And yes, these are strong believers and even they suffered attack afterwards because um, yeah, the enemy doesn't like what God is busy doing. So beware. I'm warning you. I'm telling all of you to beware. This is a lot to process for the natural mind, but for those who have the spirit of God dwelling within, this will be amazing news. This will be everything you've been waiting for, praying for. New revelations. Maybe many of you are in ministry. This is going to give you some clarity as to what God is maybe doing in your life as well. Um, but beware, the enemy is attacking faith right now. He is absolutely coming after our faith. And I, I see, I, I mean, I experienced it myself the day after this revelation where the enemy came at my faith. And who do you think you are to be able to do this? You know, those kinds of thoughts that come into your mind. Um, I can't do this. This is too big for me. Um, how am I going to get all of this done? All of these kinds of things, or maybe I'm just not worthy enough to do this. Um, this is what the enemy is coming against the body right now when God starts moving. So please be aware of that. Okay. I'm going to give you a lot today. Chew on it bit by bit. If you can't handle all of it, watch it in little segments. But you need to watch this whole video because this is just amazing. Now, many prophets have prophesied over the last few years, um, myself included. We've prophesied that God is doing a new thing upon the earth. That there was a time coming of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That he was shaking up the church and changing things, okay? Many prophets have been aligned in the word that they have released over the nations. Okay, so we know that this is from God. We know that he is busy moving in a new way. Now, I want you to think about something. When God says, I'm about to do something new, how can we continue in our old ways? What is this new thing that God is doing? Or are we just going to continue going to church on a Sunday? You know, going to our little prayer groups every week, doing our normal old thing. When God is speaking to those who are listening and he's saying, I'm doing a new thing. Today, I'm going to reveal to you what that new thing is. And it's going to be a lot, a lot to chew on. Okay. I'll get to that. Let's begin with a word from the Holy Spirit. My people listen, for I shall show you former things and things that are now here. It's very important how he begins this word. This new thing will contain former things as well. I am revealing my will upon the earth. And I am making it plain for all to know and for all to taste and see. For I have not changed, says the Spirit of God, as I was with Moses. So I am with my servants today. For my character is constant. I do not change. My, my will laid the foundations of the earth and all that I had planned for humanity was set forth. All that I had planned for my people would come to be in the unf unfolding of time. Nothing has changed from all that I had planned in my heart from the beginning. 
of creation. This is very important because regarding what, I, what I'm going to reveal to you today, we see the will of God right from Genesis 1 being revealed. He hasn't changed. He is still the same. He's telling us, listen, my people, I have not changed. My will was sent forth already before I even created the earth. He knew exactly what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it. And he started revealing his will to us as a human race from Genesis 1, verse 1. Okay, very important. For thus says the Holy Spirit, when I created Adam and Eve, my plans were to walk with them, to have deep and intimate fellowship with man so that they may know me and live in a place that man can barely comprehend this day. A place of deep surrender to me, a place of perfect peace, a place so filled with joy and purity that nothing could harm you. It is a place I desire to take my chosen bride once again. It is the Garden of Eden. And as the Holy Spirit finished that word, the Garden of Eden, he said to me, go and look up the Hebrew meaning of the word Eden. Very interesting. I found this. The Hebrew root from which Eden, the word Eden is derived, can be found in the story of Sarah when she heard the word about Isaac. In the scripture that says, so Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? That word pleasure is the same Hebrew root word as Eden. The original Hebrew word for pleasure is Edna, which comes from the same root as Eden. Okay, so we can see one meaning there of Eden means pleasure. Psalm 36 verse 8 says the following, They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. Now this psalm that the Lord led me to is so significant because of what I'm about to share today. Please highlight this verse and go read it again after I've finished speaking today and you'll see the connection. Now this word in the psalm delights is again the same root word that we see described as Eden. So we see Eden is something that is filled with pleasure something that is filled with delight. The original Hebrew for the word delight is Adanecha, from the same root as well. Therefore, okay, we can see that through various translations, we can see that the Hebrew term for heaven and paradise is translated as Gan Eden, Garden of Eden. So, when we think of heaven, when we think of paradise and all those feelings and, and things that wash over our imagination of what it must be like, this is what God intended when he took man into his garden. Now, were Adam and Eve in heaven? Were they in paradise somewhere, somewhere far away? No, they were right here on earth. Okay, this shows us what God is capable of doing with man when he walks with man in the same way. And this will happen before the fall. All right, now, continuing with the word from the Holy Spirit, he says, I am taking my bride back to my original intent when creation began. I am bringing her into my garden, a garden that I will once again plant with my servants, and a place where I will dwell with mankind again. A place of perfect peace that is filled with an abundance of pleasures for my bride, in whom is all my delight. For I am building my new church. I am building and planting what man has not yet known or even perceived with their minds. 
for thus says the Holy Spirit, see, have I not told you from long ago, I will build my church and it shall be more glorious than any of you have known or imagined. For I'm building and planting with my servants, those who have been faithful to me in the desert seasons, those who obeyed me when it made no sense. Those who walked by faith and kept their faith in me when everything crumbled around them. My burning ones, says the Spirit of God. These will carry my glory, the glory that was seen on my son when he stood upon the mountain and was transformed into light before the eyes of his disciples. I hope you all understand what that's pointing to. That's the scripture where Jesus went up the mountain with, with his uh, three disciples and he was transfigured right in front of them. The Holy Spirit says, these ones shall shine brightly with my glory upon the earth and give light to all those around them. For I'm establishing houses of light in the midst of a dark world. Her light shall shine and darkness shall flee, for nothing can withstand the glory of my rising. My new church shall be built, a place where my presence shall dwell with man once again, and it shall be in the midst of my garden that I have planted. For the earth shall once again taste the beauty of the creative breath of its creator, the earth has been groaning up until this day for the Creator to arise with his sons and daughters to release fresh winds of his Spirit upon creation. You will be astonished. As I plant the Garden of Eden in many places upon the earth, I has not seen nor ear heard of what I am capable of creating. Therefore come, my bride, and plant and build with my servants. For the glory of the Holy One will arise upon thee. Come and participate, says the Spirit of God, in the establishing of my house upon the earth, and you will see the goodness of your God in the land of the living. I am inviting all those with willing hearts to come and establish my house upon the earth, as Israel did in the days of Solomon and in the days of Nehemiah and Ezra. For I will equip my bride with abundance of provision, with creative gifts and the miraculous to establish my dwelling place upon the earth. For my kingdom shall be established upon the earth for the coming of the son of the living God who will rule the earth for 1000 years. Get ready for he shall surely come and all will see him and all will confess that he is Adonai upon the earth, and every knee shall bow at his coming. Amen. Let it be. Let it be, O oh God. All right. So there the Holy Spirit has revealed the new thing. What is the new thing? That God has been prophesying through so many prophets for so many years. What is this move that he's built, he is doing? This new thing is that he is building a new church. And if he says that he is building a new church, it means it's not going to look like it has looked for so long. It's not going to look the same. It's going to be different. He is doing a new thing. And even us who are part of churches, if we are walking by the Spirit, we will hear what the Spirit is leading us to change in order to flow with this new move that he desires to do upon the earth. If we are not walking by Spirit, if we don't have the prophets and we don't have the apostles, we're going to miss out. And we're going to see that over time, I don't think it's going to happen overnight, but over time, slowly but surely, the old way of doing church is going to be eradicated. God is doing a new thing. This new move of his spirit is going to look differently. I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to look today. And it's going to be so glorious. 
that believers are going to flock to these new churches. Why? Because the glory of God is going to dwell there. And um, this is going to carry the revival. This is going to carry whole communities being transformed and changed. All right, so in order to explain the new thing in detail, I need to take you on a journey with us as a ministry and what God has been doing. Many of you are ministers. You will see the same thing. We've met some of you. You know this journey that God is talking about where he took us through a desert season, a season that was filled with trials, tribulation, um, so much heavy spiritual warfare. And yet we kept the faith, we kept our eyes on our Messiah, and we went through it, knowing that there were better things in store for us. All right. So as a ministry, when we began, when I began walking with our Father, he already told me that one day I would build his church. But I didn't understand how. And um, back then I had no idea what he was leading me into, yet. For a long time, he kept me out of the, the normal church system. I didn't understand why for many years. I wanted to go to church. I, I liked going to church. And when I did go to church, he would ask me what I was doing there. <laughs> and I didn't understand why until now. I understand now why it was so crucial for me not to get used to the old way of our church system. Because that would have hindered the new thing that God wanted to do in building his new church. So it was crucial for whoever is being raised up today to build his new church, for us to have been kept out of the old system so that the creative ability and faith that the Holy Spirit needed to imprint on our souls and our spirits could flourish, okay, without being hindered by old systems. So we began prayer groups throughout the years. We, we as a ministry, we focused on many different aspects. And many times people would ask me, so what are you supposed to do? And I'd say, well, we do a little bit of this. We do a little bit of that. We do all kinds of things, you know, never being able to put it together as one until now. We were focusing on prayer groups and we pray with people and raise up prayer worries. We still do that. We were prophesying, as many of you know, um, as I've been sharing here on YouTube, prophesying over the nations, prophesying over the church. God called us to the church. So we focused a lot on the nations and the church. We were also um, teaching the gospel, uh, preaching the gospel to many who had never really heard the true gospel, even though they were sitting in, in the churches, um, leading a lot to repentance. And we were also, in the last few years, especially focusing on deliverance ministry. So a lot of things that seemed good, many different directions, um, wrote a book even about deliverance ministry. So many things that we were focused on. Then a couple of months ago, about three, four months ago, the father spoke to me and he said, I want you to start teaching my people how to plant my creation. Many of you know that I released the fire prophecy. If you haven't listened to the fire prophecies Please go back and search for the fire prophecies under my profile. It's very important that you understand that aspect as well, which I will still talk about later on. From that moment, God asked me, okay, I want you to start teaching my people how to plant. Listen, I didn't have much knowledge either about planting in the ways of God just a few months ago. So, you know, even in telling people that this is what God wants me to do, they would go, really? <laughs> Why is a minister of God needing to plant a garden? Why do you have to teach people, you know, how to, how to eat? Like, I understand it's, it's going to get tough and, and things are bad, but you, you're a minister. You're, you're, you're an apostle. You're, you're prophesying and you're, you're doing such great spiritual work. Why do you now need to divide your time in teaching people, you know, physical things? <clears throat> and I must say, I did share the, the, the skepticism. I did. I mean, why was God asking me? My time is already so short. Why was he asking me now to do this thing? But I obeyed because I'm used to doing that. Whatever God wants for me, I do it. Sometimes I grumble along the way, but I do it. 
And so I had to quickly start learning how to plant God's way, what not to do, what to do. And God was so faithful in, in just a few short months. He brought everybody across my path who were experts in all kinds of fields that uh, supported us as, as a ministry, that prayed with us, that um, taught us so many things. I mean, I have now learned how to plant a whole food fo fo forest Sorry, um, in just a few short months. And I know there's still a lot to learn, but God has been absolutely faithful along the way. Still, I did not understand how all of this would come together. Then, about two months ago, we had a meeting with our Pretoria leaders and we, we flew in from the Eastern Cape because that's where we were living. Um, all of you know, for the last five years, we've been moving up and down the country. We've lived in eight provinces in just five years, moving up and down at the whim. Whenever the Lord said go, we would go. Whenever he said stay, we would stay. We would be led by the Holy Spirit everywhere across the country. And many times we didn't know why we were led to places. So sometimes he would take us into the middle of nowhere, really, uh, where there was wild animals walking around our home. And we would see creatures we'd never seen before, this kind of thing. And we'd wonder, you know, God, what are you doing? Why are we here? You know, three months spending it just in the middle of the jungle, not ministering to anyone. But that's where God took us. And now finally it makes sense. Anyway, okay, so we were with our Pretoria leaders, and um, when I was planning our trip to Pretoria, I have to give you this testimony. When I was planning our trip, um, I remembered an email that someone had sent me a couple of months ago saying to me that if we ever, uh, you know, want to come to Pretoria as a ministry, that uh, we could come and stay in her home for free. So um, I remembered that email as I was planning my trip. And I contacted the woman and I said, you know, we're coming to Pretoria now. Um, where exactly are you? Um, and is your offer still available? And she said, yes, de definitely. And she was so excited. And we planned to go and stay at her house for the last two nights of our trip. <coughs> Not knowing what God was planning. We had no idea. Okay, so. The... Um, the last two nights, we arrive at this woman's house, okay? We were under severe spiritual attack that day. I landed up in hospital. I mean, it was just rough. It was, <laughs> it was extreme. And I couldn't understand what was going on. Why was the enemy throwing such onslaught at us just for teaching people how to plant? I couldn't understand it. For weeks now, we've been under the, se the severe attack just because... We were planning on, on teaching people how to plant and live sustainably. Okay. So anyway, I finally arrive at this woman's house and I go straight up to the room and I sleep for a few hours because I'm filled with medication. I just come from the hospital, not feeling great. I wake up that evening. My husband had been downstairs talking to the woman. And as I wake up and I'm about to go downstairs, the spirit of God speaks to me and he says to me, I want you to pray over this land. I thought, okay. So I go downstairs and I, I say hello and I excuse myself or, you know, um, so uh, not so nice uh, having to spend uh, time in the room um, when I just arrived. And I know she was excited to see me and I was excited to see her. Anyway, so as I sit down, I say to her, God spoke to me and he said that I needed to pray over this land. So um, anyway, I excuse myself and I go back upstairs. I leave my husband with her. I go back upstairs and I start praying. And as I pray, the father speaks to me and he says, I want you to move here. Now, this is Gauteng. This is where we lived 10 years ago. This is where we said we would never return to. Okay. So it, it completely surprised me. We were not planning on moving to Gauteng. Um, Pretoria, the outer parts of Pretoria, um, didn't know why this was necessary, wasn't what I was expecting. Okay, so I go back downstairs, I look at my husband, and as I look at my husband, I realize that he already knows. God already spoke to him while I was sleeping. <laughs> and he looks at me, and he knows that I know, so I say to him, you know what I know, right? And he says, yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, that was just strange how God just, 
He just confirmed it with both of us before we even said a word out loud. So I sit and I turn to this woman and I say, can we rent your house? She looks at me and she says, yes, you can. And there we go. Done. Just like that. So anyway, I shared a bit about the journey we, we went through, the trials and, 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 you know, just getting our mindset right of moving back to Gauteng, but we got over that. And um, her husband also came on board and he was willing to, I mean, they've lived here for many, many, many years. And yet just like that, at a whim, she was uh, willing to rent out her house. And she told me, she told us that the Lord had told her to wait and not leave yet until he allowed her to, until the right people were brought across her path. And she told us of a vision she had where she saw so many people being baptized in their little pool that they have. Anyway, so we went back to the Eastern Cape and we prayed and I asked God specifically for confirmation. And in the meantime, we spoke to her husband. Her husband gave us the amount he wanted monthly for this property, which was not a small amount. Okay. It was more than double what we were currently paying for our house in the Eastern Cape. So this was going to take faith. This was going to take extreme faith. But I knew what God had said. I knew he had spoken. So I accepted this uh, offer to, to rent their property for that amount. And I trusted God. And I asked him, please, Father, I need one final confirmation. That this is your will. This is a large amount. This is a big step of faith. Please, Father, give us confirmation. Three days later, without anybody knowing anything, we hadn't said anything to anybody. We hadn't told them the amount. We hadn't spoken to anybody about it. Three days later, somebody put the exact amount of rent we needed for the first month into our ministry's account. Two days after that, we had again the exact amount for the, for the deposit plus our moving fees, okay, put into the ministry's account. Within less than a week, God provided the deposit, the rent, and the moving fees. Now, if that's not a confirmation, I don't know what is. So, we moved. That's why we've been so quiet. We have been getting ready, moving across the country, settling into our new home, unpacking, uh, fixing up some things, um, really just establishing ourselves and at the same time praying for God to reveal his will to us here and finally he has and this is what I'm talking about today and what I'm talking about is exactly what God is busy doing upon the earth this is the new thing the thing he has prepared us as a ministry for for many many years in so many different things that he asked us to do many times we didn't understand like I've said but now we finally get it we have the picture we have the full picture and it will be done through many people upon the earth. All right. So we realize that this is not our house. <laughs> this is the house of God that we are. We have been brought to. I know that we are renting at the moment, but we will eventually purchase the, the property. Father has already spoken to me about buying the property. We are building the house of God here and it's going to look very different than what we are used to. These uh, buildings that we have called churches all across the world, where we go to on a Sunday afternoon um, or a Sunday morning, where we, you know, um, go to once a week or twice a week just to gather and then go home. And those church buildings are closed. When you're really desperate, when, you, when you're in need, there isn't really anyone available because the church doors are closed. All of these things, these buildings that feel so cold, that um, just doesn't represent God or glorify God. These massive buildings at times that just glorifies man, really. These are things that God is moving away from and he's establishing a new church. And I've had, I've heard many prophecies spoken regarding this, where God is building his church now at home. This is a home that is being transformed into the house of God. He's given us two years here to establish this. Um, we will eventually have other leaders take over here. Um, but that's what I'm called to do. As an apostle, I'm called to plant the church of God. So I'm just walking out my calling in as, as what Jesus ordained. Um, so yeah, 
this place will be transformed into the house of God, but it's going to look very different. We are building a holy of holies. There will be an area that is called off as a holy of holies. We already began back in the Eastern Gate. I took a small room and I started replicating the holy of holies. Very small, but it was beautiful. It was holy. It was where I went in to pray, to spend time in the presence of God. Okay, me and my husband, we would pray in this area. It was a holy place. Um, we would take some funding from the ministry every month and we would just we would buy the best of what we could find for the Holy of Holies. I've, I've spoken about this in previous videos. Now God is calling us to do it on an even bigger scale. All right, here, right here. So some of the building will be a church building where people will be able to come to spend time in his presence, to be prayed over, to be taught, to be equipped, to be everything that they need for the church. Here, we will be open 24-7 whenever you need us. Those who are members of our church community, um, we will be readily available to all of our members. We will have worship sessions here. We will have all-day prayer events here. We will have so much that we just don't see in church anymore or have ever seen. Okay, um, And there will be a Holy of Holies that is dedicated to the presence of God, where God will reside. Sorry, I'm just smiling now because we haven't had rain here. And as I'm just speaking and declaring this new, it is starting to pour. And I just praise the Lord for that. This is our first rain since we've been here. Okay. All right. So it's going to look different. The building will be different. This will be a home. This will be God's house where people can come and spend time in his presence. All right. Then What's even more significant is God has asked us to plant a garden, a food forest. If we read in Genesis 1 and we see that God planted a garden and then he put man in that and he dwelt with them in that garden. We see how wonderful his plan is, his new plan for the church today. It will not just be a cold building. It will actually be his creation surrounding this building as well. Okay, it's going to look very different to the, the the cold buildings that we're used to. It's actually going to be planted in the midst of a garden. And what the Spirit of God has shown me is that things are going to grow in here that we haven't even seen. His creation is just going to explode around His church. So people will be able to come here and experience the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, as well as His abundance, His creation, which glorifies Him, which, which speaks of who He is. That's why He made creation. That's why He did it, to glorify His name, to bring us to a place of understanding what He was capable of doing right from the beginning. That's why I said, Right from the beginning, right from Genesis 1, his will has been revealed from the beginning to walk with man in his garden. And that's what's being restored right now. And it's something so new that it's hard for us. It's going to be hard for us to swallow. It's going to be hard for us to understand that his house is about to be transformed completely new in a way that is new, that we just haven't seen before, not even um, in the Bible, we see bits of it here and there. We see the Garden of Eden. We see the temples that were built in the Old Testament where the Holy of Holies was. We see that man became the temple of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. All of this is being put into one. I need you to understand what is happening. All of this is being put into one. Now, it's the, the whole picture, just as with us as a ministry, where different bits were taken and now put into its full picture. Everything prophesied, everything God intended, the little bits he gave us all along the way is now being put into one for the glory of God and for the preparation of the coming of the Son of the living God. What we are establishing is the kingdom upon the earth. Remember, when Jesus returns, he will establish his kingdom. He is already preparing his bride to rule during his thousand-year reign. These places will be his places of worship where his glory already dwells and where his authority is already being exercised all over the nations. 
This is massive, people. Chew on it. Pray on it. It is more than what you can probably imagine right now, even as I'm explaining it. And I realized the moment I was called was in the garden. This was after I saw Jesus face to face. While I was awake, he appeared to me. And then I had this encounter in the garden where while I was awake, my eyes were open. I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit where he changed my eyesight and I saw the love of God in all of his creation. Everything became so bright and I saw with my physical eyes, I saw something that is so hard to explain with my words. I saw God's love and DNA and, and everything he intended for creation in creation itself. That was the moment I was called. It was because of what he was leading me to do. It's why he had to, had to keep me out of the church, out of the old ways of doing things. From the moment before I even came to salvation, before I'd even given my life to Jesus Christ, this happened to me. He called me because I was born for a purpose. I was made before the foundations of the earth. God already knew what he was going to do with my life and many others across this world. Man, and when he revealed to me what we are doing here, I mean, I knew, I knew I would build the house of God. I knew I would establish the Holy of Holies one day. I knew all of these things. I knew the bits and pieces. But as the vision came, and became one, the garden, the temple, the church, everything that he was doing, the new thing, this peace flooded me like a river. This completion of purpose. This is why I was created. I have found my purpose. I understand now. I'm doing what I was made to do. What a privilege. What an honor. And you know, there was a prayer that I prayed right from the beginning for so long. It's a psalm of David where he prays and he says to the Father, may I dwell in the house of Yahweh forever and ever. And the first time I read that, I'll never forget it, 10 years ago, I read that and my heart just exploded. And I said, oh Lord, may I dwell in your house for all of my days, forever and ever. And as the Father revealed his will to me, and the vision came to completion this week, and it's pouring out there. It's just boring. I just praise the Lord. We haven't had rain like this. You don't understand. We've been praying. Anyway, that was my prayer. And I realized when the Father spoke to me about the fullness of this vision, I get to live in his house. Yes, I'm not building my own house. It's not my possessions. It's not mine. I can't claim it. I can't put my name on it. But the Father's already stripped me for so long of my own possessions and having anything of my own. But I get to establish the house of God and I get to my family I was chosen to live in it. Even though it's only for a time period until we establish it, we get to live here. Wow, what an honor. We get to see God move. And man, have we seen over the years, I've shared the videos, the, the testimonies, the prophecies. So many things we've encountered in his creation where he would speak to me today and say, tomorrow I'm going to make that river burst its banks. And the next day he made it burst its banks. And not just the next day, but three days in a row. And I recorded that and I put it on YouTube. All the evidence is there. God has done in his creation and how he has taught us as his servants of what he's capable of doing. We're about to see the miraculous explode here. We're about to see him plant his garden again. What a privilege. What an honor. And you know what he revealed to me? This thing that we are teaching the Nehemia community. He's already bringing the transformation in those who love him. He's already transforming the hearts of the church and preparing her for the new that he's doing. He is already bringing change. He's already preparing his bride. Because it will not just be the leaders 
but everyone who is joined to the church, their lives will be touched, transformed and changed. They will have little Edens growing in their gardens. They will take home a portion of the glory and have the presence of God dwelling within their homes. There will be such a unity within the body, within those who join themselves to these new houses of God. There is going to be such blessing, such an outpouring, such transformation that he has been preparing us for. It's going to happen suddenly. It's going to happen so quickly. It's going to make your head spin. And isn't that again prophecy? Prophecy. I've completely skipped all my notes now, but it's been so good. All right. Many of the visions I have shared on YouTube, many of the dreams, prophetic dreams, are coming to pass. This is now the fulfillment of it. I want you to understand when you go and you see my vision, my visitation, my first visitation to heaven, when I saw Jesus in his fullness and I fell before his face as I was standing in the entrance to heaven, I saw an abundance in the garden around me. I saw forests for miles. I saw life everywhere. I saw the river of life. I tasted of the water of the river of life and I saw Christ in all of his glory and I fell before his face like a dead person. And I saw the angels worshipping him, singing glory, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Holy One. I encountered that many years ago. And I saw him sending the river of life and the river of glory upon the earth for the church. And this is the time it is being fulfilled right now. I also had a vision. If you go back and see, I'm going to put all of these links in the description box below because I want you to go back and see that these prophecies are being fulfilled. It's raining, it's pouring. I just praise the Lord. This is amazing. Okay. Vision of being a lighthouse. Same thing. Prophecy is being fulfilled. I'm going to put the link in the description box below. The dream I had of decorating this house with a bridegroom appeared behind me as I was putting a mirror up on a wall and his song was was playing over me and he was singing over me. My heart just got transformed. I'm also going to put the link to that um, in the description box below. And also I had a vision of a house floating in space and Jesus was in this house and I saw the Father's hand coming over this house, protecting this house and moving with this house. And I saw Jesus in it and he was ministering to his flock within it. All of these things are being fulfilled all right and then also biblical prophecy is being fulfilled many prophets have prophesied these biblical prophecies Isaiah 60 and Isaiah 61 I can barely speak it is pouring Isaiah 60 Isaiah 61 go and read it it's being fulfilled right now Isaiah 35 and Ezekiel 47 Ezekiel 47 the living water is going to flow from the sanctuary it's going to bring a spiritual manifestation of healing and abundance and it's going to bring a physical manifestation of healing and abundance from the Lord. Okay, it's being fulfilled. All right, now, come and join us in this work of God. We're asking for, obviously, we, we want, the Father has said he, we need to bring the people, the people need to come and help us labor. We don't want to do this by ourselves. If you're in the Pretoria area or Gauteng or anywhere near in the vicinity, get in touch with us. If you have any skills that you would like to add to it, whether it's in building, in planting, in decorating, whatever God puts on your heart, pray about it. We need some laborers. We cannot do all the labor ourselves. <coughs> so we are inviting people to come and labor with us in establishing this house of God. We are also asking for donations, not just financially. We're asking for all kinds of things. Um, we're looking for furniture. Material, paint, wood, heirloom seeds, trees of all sorts, plants, flowers, fencing, water tanks, uh, diggers, mulching machine. We really need a mulching machine. Um, and of course, finances. Whatever it is, whatever God lays on your heart to help us plant and build the house of God here, please, please don't delay. We really need your help. Let's do it together. Just as they did in the Old Testament when it was time to build the temple of God. God moved through his people. He 
He moved the hearts of his people and he's told me the same thing. So please send us an email. If there's something you would like to donate and you would like to discuss it with us, send us an email. Tell us what you would like to donate, uh, whatever it is, and we'll, we'll tell you whether we need it or how we're going to fit it in or how to take it forward. All right, very important. Um, and then we will also not just be building and planting and you don't know what we're doing. I would like you to please join our new Telegram. Oh, sorry. Yes, we have a new Telegram group that you can join. Um, as an online church, if you would like to be a member of our online church, and maybe if you're in Pretoria or in Gauteng and you would like to come and see the house of God and be a part of that eventually, then please join our Telegram channel. We will be doing all of our live services there. We have many leaders added there. Um, we will have weekly prayer meeting, prophecy services with various prophets, um, various leaders will be joining live services there. Um, you'll be cared for as a member of our body because that's what we're called to do. We care, we're called to care for the sheep. So please join our Telegram channel. It's uh, The link is below. It is pouring. It is absolutely pouring. I wish I could show you. I think I'm going to turn it now. <laughs> it is pouring. All right. Listen, we haven't had rain. We've had like this drought here. There hasn't been rain for so long. We've been praying. We had a heat wave. 38 degrees daily and there's no water the dams are empty the swimming pool needs to be filled there's no water we only have a borehole and it's running dry and as i'm telling you about the new that god is doing it starts pouring i mean this is crazy crazy i don't know if you can see there yes there look there look how it's pouring this is amazing the link is below um if you want to join our church community you see god moves Okay, and then we also have a YouTube channel, a new YouTube channel, where we are recording everything we are doing here, the building, the planting. You will be able to see the progress. Don't just take our word for it. Look, join this, this YouTube channel. It's called Nehemia Self-Sustainable Community. And yes, the link is also below.